Good morning. It's an honor to be here. I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Mitchell Charles. I'm the software developer. I also study computer science. So, so when it comes to IT, I'm very passionate about it. Both from training to building to execution. So when I got the information to come for the training today, I was so happy because talking about ICT in general has been something that I have been passionate about for a very long time. So today we are going to focus on hybrid learning system. Hybrid learning system. That's the purpose of this training today. Before now, the world is already used to the traditional method of learning. You go to the classroom, write on the board, the students ask questions, and when you're done, everybody goes on. Some students go back to their book, some don't. There's an advantage to traditional method of learning, there's no two ways about it. But your board has never passed their a long time ago. We are just catching up. The truth of the matter is that the world has lost the era of traditional method of learning. But just like everything has advantages, there's also disadvantages. The online method of learning, as much as it's solving a lot of problems, still has some hindrances or less limitations. Which is that every system for every system to be very okay, you don't just eliminate one section completely. You try to balance the both. Which is why I even believe that hybrid learning system is the best way to go. You're not completely eliminating the traditional method of learning. You're only taking the advantages of the online method of learning and adding it together to the traditional method of learning. Also, this is all gone through the course of this training. So we all know what high learning system is all about. The purpose of this training is for practical hands-on skills. I just feel like I should not be able to take your to it. So we want to be from the from the program we are doing, we are already done with the installation, which is supposed to come after the basic seminar. So I want to be all how the software is installed on our faces and our phones. So I'll be heading directly into the first software we did. The first software we did we're talking about today is Google Classroom. Sorry. Oh, let's say Classroom. When I say Classroom, you're not talking about Google No, Google is a company that's like Microsoft. I'm only going to be part of Microsoft. So Google Classroom. Open your Google Classroom. So why did I choose Google Classroom to be this software? It's the core, right? This is a reactive class, so you can become an if you are having any, you know, um, misunderstanding, any difficulty, you don't have to become an attention. It's a practical class. At the end of the day, I want to make everybody who we are going to go home as a hybrid teacher or lecturer. We are going to organize your class. Online, just like this is said, said the campuses, this is campus is having interconnected. You have know, one can be in a particular location while streaming this class online. And I know the case study of this is also been for, for secondary school, but well, it goes across borders. We do it in high institution, we do it in secondary school, we do it in primary school. At the end of this training, you're able to say, I have a skill now, I can make money. From hybrid learning, people make money from this. People, I'm not, I'm not here to preach about my parents. People make money from this. You don't tell your kids, you're a teacher. There are those that make money from this. Well, the software we're talking about today, and there's a thing with Google Classroom. And I choose this first because it is the core of what we are doing today. I keep telling people, hybrid learning. It's not just one software. 
It's not just one software. Right? Who say that we might be an online and okay, I just learn how to use Zoom and put it up. No. That is just that is the tip of the iceberg. If you want to be grounded as a hybrid instructor, you don't just say, I know Zoom and I'm going to do, I know Google and Google Meet and I'm going to do. There are software, the packages that goes together with it, which you're supposed to know. If you like this, this is software that we selected to go. Now, Google Classroom is the core of it because this is the platform where we can keep assignments to our students. We could have our students ask us questions. We could give tests to our students. We could upload our materials to our students. We could do everything that the traditional method of learning goes, all in one package. So, if you know Google Classroom, you go to the core of it, but that is not all. It's a system that the students are supposed to get the feel. You know, some students have phobia or aggression, some students have fear when they come class, some students are so shy, you know, they can't express themselves when they are in the midst of the classroom. So we have to create a platform where the students can feel free to express themselves, like communication, like content creation, where the students don't feel like, ah, oh, somebody will tell me this one will come to me, like, I'm in that the students can feel free that they are using their pieces to learn. So then we create an environment for the students to be free to learn. So and you as an instructor, if you don't create such an environment for your student, you won't get your end goal. You will have a hybrid system, but your students cannot communicate with you. So the purpose of this other software, I get together to um, go to classroom, is a way that you get the entire package. So it's a practical class. If you just ask any question as you are progressing into the practical right now, if you are understanding anything, push it to go So now, for us to start with Google Classroom, on your browser, you type classroom.google.com. Classroom.google.com. For those that are taking notes, you can do that. That's the new area on the browser for you to get access to Google Classroom. Now, just like every other site, I will need to create an account if you don't have an account. If you don't have an account, you need to create an account. If you don't have an account, you need to create an account. But the reason this software is selected is because we all have a Gmail account, or most of us have Gmail account. So with your Gmail account, you don't need to create another account. You are good to go, right? So, but this is for those that have yahoo.com, yahoo.com, rocketmail.com, mouseway.com. Those accounts that are being used before Gmail, so people don't have Gmail, they still use their, their Yahoo mail as well. So if you don't have a Gmail account, you will need to create one. Okay? If you don't have a Gmail account, you need to create one. That is the first step. If you have a Gmail account, you are going to just sign in. You open your phone, you open it to your PC, it goes across platforms. Have we done that? Create an account or sign in with a Gmail account on your app. Please, as much as you're writing, I would like us to be participating. It's meant to be a practical class. So if you have your PC, I would be grateful if you could open your Chrome or the Firefox or Edge, any sort of website you're using, any browser you're using, just click it up. So if you open your Platform.google.com and you sign in, you will see something like this. You won't have to see signs. I just put it down to show you an example. Okay? Have we done that? Have we done it? Please, let me get my phone to me. There are some senior citizens that will need help. Yes. They will need help. My daughter, Lava. If you have any questions, please speak to us. Some person already have a uh, classroom of Google users already, which is already in the system, right? But there are those who don't. And even though you, you know it, there are still some tips I would get to explain to you. Because, like I said, 
Some persons use classroom and they feel like, oh, I'm good to go, I just have to write my notes for the job. You will not get seen, we feel. You're not creating a path where the students can feel very comfortable to interact with it. And some of us go classroom and then it's like for those who are woman groups, like in primary school, in secondary school. It's a different body that feels so for the institution. But for primary school, you will critic a notes or an assignment or an announcement. And then the next day, as you go to the classroom, the kids have already missed the whole place well with text. You see that a lot. But if you have if you're used to have it already, you might notice that. But for the purpose of this training, we need to envision that we can try to talk about the secondary school. So we need to have that knowledge that if you just place your platform and you don't put some settings in place, you will have an assignment and the next day you go in there, you will see the student just writing different kind of text based on the platform. So how do you put restrictions on your platforms? You know, how do you score your students? How do you motivate your students? These are the tips you get to do from this platform. So those of you are really used to do classroom, please just bear with me to than the regular user. 
right? Now, when you use the Google uh, workspace by brain, you can use Google Meet, for example, or Google Classroom. So this is what you is. Google Classroom has this one integrated Google Meet. You got what I'm saying? So, but you only get some of these features if you use Google Workspace for education. But because not everybody has to be coming from the research institutions. Some of us are feeling answers. We create courses, we upload on Google Classroom, we get paid for it. We are not part of the research institution, but we want to make use of the features of Google Classroom. Right? So if you're one of those that you don't know it, you don't need to bother about it. Just click on your checkbox here, we said that great data recommendation, and you're also good. And there are two methods, like I said, of registering. The first one is what I call Google Workspace for Education. That is for a registered institution. If you click on that now, to get us the form that we need to register our school, show that our school service and everything, right? But for the point of this now, you are just for all freelancers or you part of a school who is not registered, or a secondary school who is not registered. Just click on it and you are going to go. You are not going to say, right? Any question on that? I think it's straightforward, right? Okay, without any question, we'll proceed. Now we have this form here where we need to talk about the classroom we are creating. Some of us are natural. We are handling probably 100 level students, 200 level students, 300 level students. Some of us are handling different departments, right? Some service courses. So now you don't want your classroom to be such a state where it's not organized. So how do you organize the classroom? You use your classroom, you use your section, you use your subject, you use your room. The first one is the most important one, this is project. You must pay it up. You raise your own answer. I chose to. I like doing it up because I want my classroom to be very organized. So I was going to do what all these skills are for. So you decide if you want to pay them up or not, right? The first one is what you call the classmate. This is your room of the class. 100 level students, or in the case of secondary school, or in business seven or business age, right? That is the name of the class, right? Now, the section is probably. Money session, so school, we have what's called part time program, we have what's called money session, we have what's called any session. So that is that way of the that session is not important. If you feel like you want to pay yourself, you can do that. Section, you can also put your description of that section. Okay? Like this this classroom is for social so it's a short description. You can also put that under your section. Now your subject is like your subject matter, right? What is this subject for? Biology, chemistry, physics, mathematics, ICT. That's what you write under your section, under your subjects. Right? And the last one is your room. This is talking about your location. The location could be a virtual location, could be a physical location. Right now we are in Washington State University. You can create a room and call it Washington State University, for instance. The room from you are probably University of the Bible, any location at all. That is what you use under your room. So I'm not even this right now. Please, this is supposed to be a practical session. As much as I appreciate your writing. I also appreciate the trying out. Okay, so now without, without wasting much of our time, I'm going to lie down with it. So I'm going to fill up this class and I'm going to call it licensing. Right? Feel free to go ahead and I'm going to fill up this, I'm going to call it licensing for example. I'm going to write this and I'm going to say like this is this one is taken up. And last one is taken. This is um
Founders of the statistical models in education. Yeah, Maybe you're trying to 
Yes, and as an example, we are person. Yes, and you want it to be the key or what it does, we just create the same photo and upload it. So it becomes the best experience when you or she comes to the bathroom. I don't know if I can do what I'm saying. All right, so what you can use as my background, you just need to drag. When I drag, I want to get a quick like this. And then after that, I'm going to do it. Now, someone asked me, how do you create photos? Today, that is the great platform that can work on it. I'm not going to come right now, I'm just measuring it in my mouth, right? That is the reason why I said, you don't just go to the platform and say I'm going to go. The other software that goes together to make you a robust instructor. This is what I'm going to teach you about it, for example, now. It's a very complex system, it's also going to be online. It's not always here, theory, theory. You want to see something. How do you make them see viruses? How do you make them see bacteria? How do you make them see living organisms? I don't know how about it right now. How do you do that? If you're, if you're creative, you understand. If you walk around by you want to social channel, you're not going to learn more social. You just go there, you create all the soul, catch images, you upload. But some anybody can come to your class. People make money from this, you're not joining. If you go on YouTube and get Google Class, you see those that create content, and you upload there. You know what I'm saying? Nursery school, primary school, and people go there and they watch them. It's to pay them. I'm not going to have money right now, just letting you know how fast this game is. So, if you want uh, something like Canva or that software, you can create some of these catchy stuff and then you go to your platform. So, without wasting more of our time, I've done this, I just make a save and it's accepted. You get it. So now our ICT platform has been changed to welcome to Google.com. Welcome to Google Classroom. So that is that for that. Now the next thing I'm going to talk to you about is an announcement. Announcement. I'm having an exam next week. I'm having a test next week. The assignment is due next week. Any announcement you want to pass across to your, your students, you do that on that the announcement tab. And the announcement tab, that's the way you see your photos or your avatar. Are we for ready? Alright, now announcements in this section where I create an announcement. Example of announcement. Do some of your assignments. Take up some of your assignments. You will get to carry over. Any announcements you want to do. Now, Google has customized this to put your bag. You can now use bold, italic, underline, you know, pointer, and everything, bullets to create more awareness. So, do submit your assignment, for example. You can make it bold. In this case now, do submit your assignment. I could select that word, submit assignment. Submit your assignment, for example. And now to make it bold. So, you spend the lucky pieces on your own statement. Right? You do that. You can make it static, you can make it on the line, you can customize it however you want. That's it. Now, after that, you want to post your assignment, you want to post your announcement. Now, there are sections of posting on Google Classroom. You can choose to post now, you can choose to post it later, you can choose to save it as a draft. I want to make an announcement. Like, student teachers do that a lot. There are teachers that during the weekend, they create the syllabus for the week. So they don't have to stress themselves every day. You understand? You can create a syllabus which works out of yourself for the week. So throughout the week, you don't bother yourself. So Google has also talked about this. So that is the reason why we see you can schedule when an announcement is not good. It is Saturday. I'm very nice to see you. I'm not going to I just feel like, why was this time, right? I just go to Google Classroom and create an announcement. But the student don't need that announcement right now. The student needs the announcement probably on Tuesday. So I create an announcement, and when I want to post it, Google gives me a, 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 a feature. I can choose to post, I can choose to schedule, I can choose to send as a draft. So when I want to schedule, Google gives me an opportunity to select the dates I want that assignment to be published. So I create an assignment of Saturday, and now I'm busy throughout the week. But I selected the announcement to be posted on Tuesday. So on Tuesday, by that time I selected, the announcement is being planned. Are you following what I'm saying? Another feature, another uh, uh, option you have is you want to post the announcements now, you just don't post. The last uh, option you have is to save as a draft. I don't intend to post the announcement anytime. I don't even know what I want to put but I want to create the announcement. You create the announcement and you send it as a draft. That's okay, it's always there for you, whenever you want it. I'll be putting it 
So these are some of the um, features you have and some of the options you have. So we're going to put on this, I'm just going to put this right now. So you make the drafts, if you ever see it, you have access to it, but you must have a shared gates for each year. So shared gates, I already know when I go to another app, I'm not going to be posted, I put the shared gates. The students also don't sit until that shared gates. So post now, everything will be necessary. I'm going to go. Now there's this awesome feature of open platform I love using. It's called reuse post. As a developer, I find it very cool. Because there's a point in time when you're just so tired, you can't think of a sentence to make a post for. But you remember the last week I made such a small post, and the sentence I just want to post it. Why start afresh to make a post when you can just reduce your already posted announcement? And just go and reduce it. Anyway. So that is what this feature is for. This arrow, basically, you write and basically, that's what it is for. Because of that writing, I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw, and I'm going to draw, and I'm going to draw, and I'm going to draw. So that's for that. Now, this feature I'm going to talk about, and it's very important because if you are handling kids in ordinary school, secondary school, they can mess your timeline. They can. We see it on Facebook. You go, you go to Facebook, you're talking about what you call blockchain technology. And you made a post on blockchain technology and you post every day. And you see Facebook as see they're coming there. The post is about blockchain technology. But when you go to the comment section, just in mind, means that are not relevant to the post. How do you restrict kids from messing up the platform? How do you stop them from doing it? You could post this now, because by default, the kids have access, or the user, the user, the user, the user or the student, have access to making the comments on an announcement. So I think about, please submit your announcement. Somebody just comes in, I won't. People are very funny. I won't. I think somebody is coming there, thinking it's something funny. Or as he said, it's serious. Issue. Basically, it starts sending emojis, bad emojis. I tell you, you as a teacher, you won't be happy. So, how do you restrict people from not making posts or making just specific posts? So, by default, it is open for everybody to make comments. So, what I'm saying. So, for those that are already used to Google Apps, you might know this already in your mind. But if you don't, it's very easy to do that. What you don't do is go to your settings here. We call it class settings. If you're right, you can write it down. It's on the top right hand side of the screen. Settings. It's having a gear icon. So when you click on the settings, and settings go through. When you come down here, you find that you see a box stream. So you open settings, you click on stream. On stream, so students can post and comment. That's how it is by default. Because I know the number of kids I have, maybe uh, basic five or basic four, I know that they won't be able to manage this thing very well. So I just click on this option, and I have yeah. options for me. Students can only comment, but they can't create a post. You know what I'm saying? I have to set it to only teacher can post or comment. So you know your students best, so you know how best to structure it. But this feature is there for you to use the way it works. So you could make the post here by only students comment. You can't create your own post, so you're only commenting. You want to a post that needs answers. Or you are going to ask um, when you are going to be able to start a lecture, you need a feedback because you are not just talking about an announcement, you are talking about the equation. So you raise the kids to comment, to get their feedback, but you don't want them to create their own post. Why not? Just say it Kids can only comment, or students can only comment. And talking about an announcement, you don't want anybody to comment because there is no need for comment. It is just an announcement. Only teachers can post or comment. So these are the features you have to get. So this is just one of those features we'll talk about two hours later. But for the session we have right now, when you're done with that, you can what? Save it. And you're done. Right? Now, people can't make a, a comment apart from you as a teacher. Now, we're going to talk about this thing here called class code. It is very crucial. Class code is one of the methods through which a student can join a class. I'm going to ask a very important question. She said, how do you, how do you, when, how do you know when you're going to class and when you're going to join the class? Right? We're not going to have going to the class for teachers. But as a teacher, you're going to the class, you need students to have people up, right? It's just like your, your Zoom. You're going to a meeting. But people have to join the meeting. 
But when I look at restrictions, so not everyone just come there and they have access to it. Google creates a class code for us. So without a class code, you shouldn't be able to join the class. As a teacher, you just go there, you put your class code, and then you post it on the board or post it on the yeah. WhatsApp group chat. But this class code is a password or a passcode through which students can join your class. So there are different ways to show students can join the class. One of them is true that you click on that, join the class you see before you create the class, and you ask you enter the uh, class code. So the moment you enter class code, Google automatically links that class code to the class. Because no two classes can have the same class code. So the moment you enter the class code, Google will okay, this class code is for ICT class. Google we'll signs you. Just like Google is. Okay? Just like Zoom. So that's what class code is for. Now, upcoming is a section that Google has created to let us know if we have something coming up to be shared. So if I create an assignment now, and the assignment is submitted on Monday, I will see it here under upcoming. So right now, there's nothing under upcoming because we've not created any assignments. Okay? I'm going to go to that. Alright, so that's basically what you need to know about stream. Right? Now, the next thing I'm thinking about now is the back of it, which is classwork. Because that is what makes um, Google Classroom a learning management software. Google Classroom is a, it's an LMS, a learning management software. And it won't be a learning management software without room for assignments, tests, quizzes, materials. So the second section now is for our classroom. Now the same way I created the room, I'm just going to create. Now the problem is to different sections. Because when you come when we talk about learning, it comes in different methods. I can give a quiz. I can just drop an assignment. I can just drop a material. Or just ask a question. So there are different ways through which I can pass across information. So the first thing you see here is Google asks you, are you trying to create an assignment? Are you trying to create a quiz? Are you trying to create a question? Are you trying to create a material? Are you trying to reuse a post? Are you trying to create a topic? So we can do any of this. So just we all know what quiz is that. When you create a quiz, means there's an objective. When you're creating an assignment, it's just a straightforward assignment. Your material, have a PDF material you want to upload. Which is why you can't just know Google Classroom and feed your dummies. You should know how to create PDF material. You should know how to create your content yourself. You should know how to create the videos. So that's the whole material as well. Question, I just want to ask a direct question and how to spend the answer. Reuse posts, just like I said earlier on that stream, that's still reusing posts. Topic, I've created an assignment, so many of them, that I want to structure them into topics. With one, an introduction to biology. With two, um, living organisms. With three, difference between plants and animals. So I have all these topics, right? Just as we have our book, we have our student teacher's guide. So the same way we have it here, we create all that stuff and all So when students go go there, they don't get confused. They see everything the way they want structure, the same way they want it to see. So topic is very important. So right now I'm going to create an assignment. So I click on words, an assignment. So it's just like a Microsoft Word. The platform I can type. So what is the title of this assignment? Well, it's an ICT class. So you might be sure to go there and see what's the difference between giving up the company and the value. So I'm going to create a an ICT question, for example, so I'm going to talk about what is the topic? What is the topic? Program, for example. It could be anything. It could be anything depending on what the class is for. So our topic you know, right now is what? Program. Now remember, this is an assignment, not a quiz. It's a session for quiz. It's a session for material. It's a session for question. So the question, um, an assignment is just, okay, you ask an assignment. You could ask your question here. So what is programming and creating? So you can do that here. But now, there's the form of Google Classroom, where you don't have to do this thing, right? You already have a, a, doc, a document, a doc, a doc file, which you created on MS Word, for example, or on doc.google.com. So you already have a document already, you know, you created it. So why do you not stress yourself into coming here to, to type it? Unless you feel like you want to do that, but you don't have to do that. So let's imagine I have material already, you know, I created it a picture or something, the questions are already there, so I don't have to come and like so Google has this future product where we will just go here. It gives us our menu, show you can upload. So is the question on YouTube? I 
created a video on myself. I created, which is why I use because of our, our programs on YouTube. Today. I'll teach you how to do what that on YouTube. So then I, I created a video on YouTube. So I really don't know what I'm talking about. So the, the students want, I want them to go there and watch the video on the side of And just make a watch YouTube. Takes me to the YouTube link. I select the video I want. I recreate myself. Or I create an existing video from some other person's channel. And I'll put there. I have a, if I have a Google Drive, you understand? You don't know what Google Drive is. A class for you know by Google. So you already have a material on your Google Drive, you want to upload it, you do that. Now, create here, text you to doc.google.com. So doc.google.com, we have our slide sheets here, we have our presentation panel, we have our Excel video, we have our doc file. So it's another way that it's going to look like Microsoft Office suit, but from Google. So you already have this stuff here already on your doc.google.com, and then you want to upload it from there, why not do that? Now, the same way I uploaded the custom cover page I did before, the same way here, so I want to upload, I don't have the material on my local and so I want to upload it from here. Here, the link, it's a link already, I have the site, as a developer, then I said that I need to create them and open them on the site, and I want the student to get this assignment from the site, and do that. So, Google Action is so robust that they don't restricts you to the book, you just you only really have to do this. You can build this on your mind, you can have the whole world about it, you just decide how you want it. And the fact that I'm using YouTube on this assignment, there's only one assignment with the YouTube one. The next assignment that I choose to use the dog, the dog and materials. The next assignment that I choose to open my dog is, you understand? But this, I have a use for you. So, do we use YouTube, whichever one you want? So, I'm going to upload, maybe, I have if I have the web on my PC, which um, I want to use, I think I want to browse or drag the file here. So if I have to find the web on my, my system, I'll just drag. Otherwise, I'll just click on browse. It takes me to here. So I'm going to select one of these files, which has a picture, for example. So I have something like this. Quiz, the last question, and everything like that. I upload it and I send it. Now, there's no assignment without grade. If you just instead of the assignment, there's no grade that's right? So, how do you grade your student? Now, we have our grade from here. Your grade can go from 2 points for that assignment, 5 points for that assignment, 10 points, whatever points you want to attach to that assignment, down to the grade point. That this one also will have assignments like expensive, assignment with 5 months, and have assignments with 10 months. So, from here, we select the points are attaching to it. So this is I'm going to select 10, 10 points. Right? This is the title of it. Now, from here, now I can select the class I want to upload this assignment to. Right now, I already have the science class before. I'm just going to connect it back. Which means right now, I can use any of this class. I can put this thing now to the science class. I'm not going to do that for the science class right now. So I could choose how many of the students sees it. Right now, we don't have students right now. We're going to ask students. All of us are going to ask our students to test it out. Right now, there's no student on this class because I'm just going to be trying now. So, I'm only giving the future for one student. If there are students on this class now, we'll see them and then I select. If the class of 10 students, I just want to leave five of them to see this assignment. I'll select five of them and I'll send it to them. So, now, after doing that, the dates, just like our announcement, we can choose to post the announcements, the assignments now, or we can choose to post it anytime. I also choose the due dates when the students are meant to submit the assignment. So right now there's no due dates. Well, well, the assignment should have a due date. I want to submit it on Monday next week, for example. I select Monday. Now, in the time, what's the time you want? So, this is in the level 59, for example. I want it to be submitted at 7 a.m. in the morning when the school starts. I just go there. I select it. Topic. Right now, I'm creating a topic. 
I want to pray to So I'm just going to do one with one assignment. Right? With one. So that's his, his topic. So the one I'm going with all of this, now you can see now what I'm doing is the email that I uploaded before my lab is, has been attached to that as a document. So the moment we are done with that, we are sure everything in the way we want to be. Since I'm already uploading the material, I could just put it into the description here. Like, right? this is, this is an assignment for one. For example. So the moment I'm done with that, I click on what? Assign. So when I want to assign now, it also gives me the same uh, opportunity. Now I want to submit these assignments now. We have to send the assignment now, we have to send that in the draft. We have to schedule, we have to assign. Just like it's before, when I'm assigning, it's going now. When I'm scheduling, I want it to be posted when I want it to be posted. So assign. So the assignment is being assigned. Now, I've created an assignment. And this assignment can be seen. So this is the one, I could have created as a topic. So now I'm not assigning one after one, I send the best one. So it's now structured one by one. So the way to go to my classroom is structured. Yes, with two also, I get a nice assignment I can to the topic with two. All the assignments are with two, go on by the way. Most of the structure are going to be, we start according to the title. I see the assignments. Chemistry assignments. Uh, religious assignments. Indigenous assignments. So it depends on you as an instructor, how you want to structure. Just know this style, this style now is for classroom. It's for assignment. Now we did now create two assignments. Now this is assignment. Now I want to create another one called quiz. Right? Quiz. We don't know how quiz works. Quiz doesn't just work like assignment. I'm supposed to have an objective for the student. So now, another title, quiz assignment, for example. Quiz assignment. But I want this assignment to still be under that, that um, topic I created. So what I do, I just go here. I still select that topic with one. So I'll still have it on that one with one. But now, because this is a quiz, right? I want to use like Douglas, Google as well, Google Hand Form. One of the best ways to create your quizzes is to use Google Form. Because Google Form might be as well structured the interface for you. Just as you only the opportunity to select the question, the answer for that question. So in this case, I want to create a quiz and we use Google Form. It takes me to the Google Form tab, the tab, the Google Form tab. In this case, if you already have a form already created, a quiz already created, you just select it from there. If you don't, you create from, you create from already. So now you do what you write for in your screen, your form screen up here. You select the question you want here. Option one.
maybe on Friday, since it's just a quick. I mean, I don't quite understand it today. Um, it's just a question of some of you say maybe five points or four points. Can okay, I know? So now the same thing here, I said C or science, we don't want to do it. So when I'm done with that, I think I'm the But I want to use this this form I created here.
Now this this um, class is for six different software engineers. So I have to consider them very well. Because if for only now one of these software is to make you maybe a couple of days to learn. But because of the time you pray, I'm just trying to make sure that everybody gets it. But if you understand everything so far, you're good to go. So now I'm going to head down here and look about this uh, settings here. Settings. Now settings from this first section can see it's already what we know. Our class name, our class description, our section, room, subjects. Now under here now, we we'll see this. Manage invite school, right? Turn down. Get what I'm saying? I'm on that section now, I'm not about writing. I'm on that section, I'm going to speak to you in the future, you have a section. What are your settings, sorry? And you can customize to your taste, right? This is not a straight, this is not a class work, this is not a paper, this is not a brief. This is under what? Settings. Your Google Classroom settings, you want to customize. For example, you have a, a code, right? You have a code which you created on the Google Classroom. You forgot it, or you don't be just, and it was um, hacked. It's possible, the room can be hard. It's crazy, but that's what I mean. I've experienced it before. Back in 2020, we had a during the COVID-19 COVID period, and Scott then invited me as a speaker for an event we were having. It was a massive conference or a CS conference together. And as in as a main person on that technical field, I created a zoom in then. So it was crazy. I created a zoom in was to the class of computer with like 300 persons from different units, from different projects. So we all together, we are having a smooth session on that Zoom. Paid for, not to free, license. And as time went on, towards the second day of the event, the Zoom day was hijacked. We were streaming, someone was speaking um, virtually. On what was happening, they have the same foreign persons, foreign persons on the platform. So they just um, posted on Twitter and everything. So they kept okay, who just went there and saw the I was an instructor on the platform, so I have access to it. As time went on, I put on a lot of press my own. Completely locked out. I was seeing what was going on. But now for the white guy, I think they are the Asian or whatever, I can't remember the continent. So started writing music with blackboard, writing, you know, drawing. It was it was a chaos. Everybody was frozen. At first, we were all happy, but we saw what we said at first, right? People were like, well, my, my leader told me, like, wow, so we never knew this, this Zoom went far too, but we're seeing foreigners, so like, ah, well, like, yeah, we used, um, we used Twitter and everything, but so we, we felt, okay, this year, people that were coming to me, it was just yet something. So, as I went on, when I knew that I don't know how access to my system was, when I tried to, because they were not making money on the Zoom, I tried to meet them, nothing. I had to log off, nothing. I was frozen. I you know someone was already speaking virtually, and no one could even hear the lecturer talking. I was like, wow, this is real. This is just an amazing. But what I'm trying to say, your, your, your class can be hijacked. The fact that Google created it doesn't mean it's, it's fair for you. Know? So, with something like this now, you can reset the password. You created your room, you have been going on for a while, 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 you have been going on for a So it's now the new password that people can use to login, right? Now, if you turn it off from people, so people you don't need people to log in the password, you just want them to just come in without the password, turn it off, right? So, anything you're using, Zoom, whatever, just be security conscious. No platform, as long as it's internet, no platform out there is app proof. Yes, so, what that special story is talking about the futures of this. So someone asked me, how do you find out the problem? I showed up here, how to create another, another zone that was not going to do. I had to shut down the, but it's, it's, it created a little soup once when, because we now have to regenerate a new invite and then start passing across. That was the only way. And the only way you could do that, shut down the room, is going back to your admin password settings, just like we are here on that zone. But you can't do it from the Zoom interface as a man. You want to go back to your account. Yeah. It's hard for the pen to draw, but I'm just letting you know that it's hard. So it's not like you just come here and disconnect yourself. Alright, so after that, the next one we have is um, class view. That's just the interface. How do you want your class to be seen? This is PYPG1. 
mind if we were here. Your sense? I'm just gonna change. Okay, so my so my last time about the, the link you saw, even if you saw the thing, this is also where it's going from. So so after that, the next thing I should have, I think I'm going to explain this. We use this under the announcement section. So you don't want to comment on your own, they want to comment on your own, they want to post. That is what this is for. Now, what I want to do is like, okay, so it shows the intended items. Now, turn it on. Just like I'll have everything I'll recite to be a lot of this thing. If you need something, but you still want to say it. But when you read the item, even if you see it as a teacher, the students will be able to see it. Right? Then I want to assign another category for my exams. 
Right? I'm not talking 10 points and 30 points. I'm 60 points to begin with. So, I'm not saying 60 points. For my son. Right? So, after doing that, I'm selected to that point. So, now when I'm going to create an assignment, the, the platform prompts me, why do you want to use the point assigned to assignment? Do I want to use the points assigned to test? Or do I want to use the point assigned to exam? So let's, try, let's go back and see how it works. I'm going back to the classroom. I'm selecting one of these. Very important. The fact that I've created a class or an assignment doesn't matter how it is. It's obvious that I get it. This is my class. So I've already created this program that we did. And now I want to do what? This is, this is that thing that I have done it. Right? Now, this section now is for those that have come in the assignment. It is there right now because I don't know how to find students. So, who will come in the assignment? But if I have five students now in the class, this number will change to what? Five. Then, how many students have submitted the assignment? We counted here. Okay, then. Now, this is going to be visible until the due date. The moment the due date is on, it goes on. Now, the same thing here. How many students have submitted the assignment? How many plus again? Yes. Okay? So that is what you need to, to understand about that. This is very clear. So, I want to rename my, my topic. I do that here. I want to copy the name. I do that here. I want to delete it. So, going back to my stream, now we can see all the stuff I've printed so far. This is the assignment. This is the announcement I made. Do submit your assignments. These are the, the, the assignments I made. These are the quizzes I made. So they are all here under our street. So our street is like our platform, our interface where we see everything going on with us. So the student is coming now to submit a comment. If it's your to submit a comment here. Now remember when I talked about upcoming stuff, and I said it is it was bad and because then because we have nothing. Now you can see we have something here. These are the gym dates for which the assignments are used today. Now I want to edit, what what was here? I want to edit an assignment to show us how to use that grace system. I just created. Now I click on what? Edit. Let's get back to what I was saying before. But now I'm going on that point. Right? Great category. So before that it was empty. Right? But now it's giving me option for assignment, giving me an option for First, you need to show the exam. So if I select exam now, the points are automatically changed to system. Right? If I select um, test, it's automatically changed to test. If I select assignment, it's automatically changed to test. So I want to understand what that means for people. But we now understand what I mean by global ground system. Assignments in your settings, and instead of having to always come to now, do this here. So, any questions so far? Wow, so we all understand it. See, anybody can be a hybrid instructor. And this is the core of it. Go classroom is the core of it. Core, see what happened? The core of this is the core of it. So the moment you know how to use it, every other software you're learning today is more like what I call um, an add on. Yes, just to add to it, so make sure you go classroom. Now, for those that are going to the field for this, one thing I find as a thing I'm going to use as a protein, you know, we, you're trying to pitch an idea to test. You're trying to pitch an idea to people that are already used to a particular system. How do you convince them to use it? We as uh, IT personnel, we know how important this is. So how do you, you know, convince somebody in secondary school to stress themselves doing this stuff? So we know it's not stressful because it takes a lot of work away from you. But how do you convince them to do it? That's one of the hindrances ICT has been getting so far, especially in developing countries. Psychologically, people are not ready to work on their head. Somehow they, they know it's important to them, but why should I say it? As a lecturer, you may be having uh, a training in the United States, in the other country. You could have a training within the country, but in the United States, you could go to different states. So you know you need some responsibility because you won't be around for class to actually pass your information across. Why do you want to in secondary school who is always in class 
to do this. I'm going to speak to class. I don't come up with you, right? I'm a school teacher. I'm a primary school teacher. I don't know how to do the dreams, traveling outside, and having meetings and everything. So I know I'm not going to say that you can So why should I? Why should I pick your own money? That's one of the critical points of ICT. You know, so when you're telling them about ICT and making their work on it, when they know they're having a personal gain from it. People know they're having a personal gain from it. You don't have to make an explanation, but I'm just giving you a point. That's why I said it's a tip. It's not a skill. So I find that when you pitch into your, into your audience that this concept is not just to you know, make you a, a, a 21st century teacher. You can make money from it. Who creates YouTube content? Right? But who watch YouTube content? But if you get this, we have YouTubers. We have X, as it's most popular than job. People create content creation and you're being paid in dollars. You understand? People use Instagram, they're being paid for it. People use Gitarra, they're being paid for it. People use LinkedIn, um, they're being paid for it. So many platforms now pays for content creation. But these days, we hardly see content creators coming from the educational sector. You can see a content creator as a blogger, talking about entertainment, talking about sports, talking about politics. It's rare to see content creators coming from the educational field, and it is sad. For you to get the research work done, academia, Wikipedia, so many platforms. For you to see a dance video, TikTok, how many views? One million. Wikipedia. One, one thousand five hundred Why? Because people have not seen the reason why they should do it. Everybody wants to make ends meet at the end of the day as the truth. So we all know this is this is working. Like this is said. And I was so happy when he said it. If I'm connecting, it can cost it. And he said something very crucial. He said it costs money. On a normal, if you don't see the advantage of it personally, you won't want to spend money doing that. But because of the advantage of it. So if you don't let people see the advantages of it, I just come on you know, yeah, this, your, this your idea is very good. And I'm okay with one of these. Yes? Now, sometimes you see why people use tools, platforms, like cameras, and it's because they are different. So when you can convince your, your audience, in this case, the teacher is not the student, because the student is not the Right now, this school, we are, there, we are now a high school school. All parents, Get your students a tablet. They have interest in certain information. So you're trying to convince the teachers per se, not really the students. Because your, your target audience now is teachers. The students, my target is now learning. That's what you're responsible for. So how do you convince the teachers to use this class of sales? They are not as flexible as the children. Then you understand that you can make money from them. It boosts your CV. I am, um, I, I graduated from Stratford School. I did. Uh, I went through teachers' college and they born in the secondary school. Good and fine, you get paid because but everybody wants a promotion. Everybody wants it. You are in the government school right now, in the primary school, in the secondary school, private school. But not this school like um which school I don't know. I don't know which school is one of them. So there's a very big school now who pays the hundred and fifty K for teachers. And you're working in a school that pays 30 k you are both teachers, right? But there's a reason the school was able to employ somebody in order to this school, and you can't see yourself applying for that. You are both teachers. When you scale up, you have the confidence now. Right? So when you can sell your idea to them like this, you might go through maybe teachers' college and every platform. But if you have this across your belt as one of the skills you have, you can. And this place, when you have to care as a teacher, expect you to know one or two things about ISIS. We wouldn't want, I'm not going to be coming up and our, we are locked down because our teachers cannot scale up and then teach the students when they are not done. But now, what are we paying you for? I shouldn't be paying you for that. Okay, if you can't teach my students how to use Google Classroom when we are not done. As a difference between why the parents are paying students who are school fees and they are paying students who are school fees. I'm happy when I was called upon to undertake this. I was told schools will be selected that meets the minimum requirements. So you should have the confidence to tell them, okay, yeah, in this school you guys have these facilities, these structures, make use of it. And the reason why I spent so stress we could use for the same training, but the reason why I have this is because you can use you can even put on your mobile phone and put your PC. The teacher doesn't have to tell you I don't have a PC. So we don't have a PC. The school has a PC. Because for you to be that school, training them on this, they have that requirement. So they have a program. 
Let them be different times in your home. Come to your school place, upload it to your YouTube account. Come to your home classroom, add it up. Open your camera on your phone, create one of two catchy images for the page for the primary school. Creating content for the ICT, laptop. Just some way, it's just like a textbook. Your materials, think we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. So, material on that here, on the other classroom. This material is not for assignments, it's not for classroom, it's for uploading content. The materials, your postwork, you know. Traditionally, you have your textbook, which has colors, of pictures, and everything, it's a century. But now you are converting them into a digital classroom. So, maybe you snap, you sign, or you're creative enough, you snap. You go to the platform like Canva, like my brother, a PowerPoint, you create your content, you upload. That's what I'm saying. So, this is one of the reasons why they scale up. Google pay, Google pays. And let's tell you something. You have a content on YouTube. Google doesn't care who watches, who watches your content. And as long as they are legit, they are no good. So, you're teaching a classroom that has 10 students. You really have 10 subscribers. It's easy to grow subscribers. You are lecturer in the school, you have 150 students. Ah, you guys, you are starting this week, it's on YouTube. You must watch that video. But what's the difference between 150 years? It's different from a freelancer, I'm not going to have a question to say yourself. If you are a teacher, you have a question to say yourself. You are handling 100 level, 200 level, 200 level, 200 level. I said, see. I thought you combine this, this, your students, you go to like 600, 700 students. And then people are watching your video. Ah. As long as you get paid for it. And this is not like, it's not your, your real salary. It's just like a side goes, which is not, it's not something for you to do. What's your information about? But you will be recognized as a content creator and it's paid for it. You don't have to, you, you don't have to get your returns in your business. So as time goes on, it's six months time, a year time, two years time. As time goes on, you'll be your students now. If your content is very rich, you're not going to get your subscribers just for your students. Your students are going to be friends with other school. So, 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 and I'm a YouTuber, for example, I created a YouTube project on ICT. So I want to upload it. How do I do? I go here. Now, as this is now, I'm gradually heading into another course. Material. Okay, now, now step by step method, for those that are writing down, step by step method to get down to material. Step one, you already know, you've created a new book, you must have created a classroom already, right? Yes. Now, you click on classwork, create a classroom, click on classwork, you can find classwork at the top, top page hand of your screen. Top page hand of your screen. You click on classwork. You click on grades. Click on grades. Then click on material. See, there is a three of us in the So I create, I put the material title. Material for the phone. Material for the phone. Right? I'm just copying this so I don't have to type the description. But this description is going to be found going to in depth of what the material is going to be. You know, this is the material for the phone. You can make it go with that. So now, YouTube. This is going to be an option to upload my YouTube link for the video, right? Now, we're going to upload the video this morning. Here. Yeah. Nobody has watched it. Nobody knows how to do it. So, I'll show you how to upload the video. I'll create a video for the video. But in this case, right now, I'm going to copy the, the link of this, um, of this video, right? So, I will use so. This is the video I'm trying to do. This is the video I'm trying to do. And let's create a video from here, I think what it says. So in this case, we right, can use we can use one song to get to bed, right? We can upload a video on YouTube and then we will now use the YouTube into the video. Okay, right? yeah. So somehow now I'm bringing this other software into this now. YouTube is one of the six software. 
Now, this one, like every other one, like a good platform, you will not get if you have a good account already. If you don't have one, you create one. So, I'll let you explain how to create a good account. So, you already have a good account, you log into YouTube. Now, when you log into YouTube, let me just go to YouTube.com. And this is what everybody sees when they go to YouTube. So, some random videos. It's a, it's a video platform, right? Now, when you log into YouTube.com, you're not in, remember, you have to have an account. If you're not having an account, YouTube will still open for you. If you notice it, even if you're not signed in, YouTube will still open for you. We're talking about a registered user. So, you log in with your account. You click on the that's a good account. Yes. You have uh, Google is a source, not a memory source. So it's only when you have your Gmail that you have access to this. There's only thing Google, uh, Google has. Google has Google uh, Doc, you have Yenzo, you have Firebase, uh, uh, you have Sony, you have Google Space and everything. So if you have a Gmail account, you have access to all of these YouTube tools, including Classroom, Google Meet, and everything. Now, but they don't limit you from using this platform if you have an account. We can only join. Not what you need to do, you can watch. We can't do it. You understand? Because you have to wait for a chat to log into an account. You have a Google Meet, you want to join Google Meet, no problem, join, but you can't do it. Want to use Google Classroom, you don't have an account, you have to have an account. So, uh, Google the Gmail account is more like um, a link. And it's branch that connects you to all of the Google softwares. So, in this case, I'm not into my Google account. I give my profile. Now, this one profile gives me an option to switch account. There are those that have two YouTube accounts, two YouTube account, one for the personal, one for the subscribers, one for the channel. This is a good thing that you see YouTube account. Right? So, in this case, I'm going to create a content. Or, more like, I'm going to create a content. One, I want to call premium subscribers. You can create a live, a live stream. You know, you're talking, you're talking to your students, you're talking to them, they're hearing you in real time, those are means stream. Now, you can also create, you just upload a video you're already having, right? So, you click on what? Create this camera icon on the top right hand side of your screen. What is the right side? Now, you click on what? Upload video or you go live. In this case, I'm going to upload a very existing video. Now, Google is very straight. In their privacy or you know, their privacy to them. You can't go and put somebody's material. I will show you an example. I will show you an example right now on my account. There was a material I uploaded back in 2018 or there around. And I was wondering for a while why I didn't get a subscriber. It was my material show. I just wasn't online. I wanted to. I never knew that it was. And I was wondering how come I'm not getting views from it. It took me like three months or four months. I don't 
the problem. But I'm hoping the video already existed. If you just argue on the internet, right? I just copy the link and go to the classroom and use it. I have the an ICT class, right? How to program and compile them. Like I saw a video, a video on YouTube, so I feel like it's still web students. I don't want to create one. It's not against any terms of function. I'm not going to YouTube. So I'm going to copy the link. Yes. And I'll not go to the other Yes. Exactly. But I'm talking about you want to enhance your skill, that like you are all around. So you're coming to your class, not just to see those content. You're coming to see your own content. You created, like, I remember back during the COVID 19 time. See, that was when. Yes, your own material and like that in YouTube. But you didn't create a video on YouTube, when you created it with using your camera or something. You want to now upload it. This is my high question now. We use a puppet called Fisher. Fisher, for example, now as a department. Now you are a lecturer on that Fisher. I mean, you guys went for in a fish pond, you know, so that you drink, you have a discussion on the rice cat was. You guys you were explaining tilapia, catfish, and everything. You need a video. You know, you want to now upload that video content to your YouTube account, it's paying. Okay, this is the categories of fish and everything. You want to select to watch it. This is not just going to watch somebody else doing. And by the way, you're giving them a link to go watch somebody else's content. You're increasing that person's subscriber. At the end of the day, increasing that person's payment is something you would have done yourself if you can. Let me know what I'm saying. So in this case, now I need to upload our own content. This is why I said you must not use somebody's material if you're uploading on YouTube. So now I'm selecting a video, a very simple video. This is a video made. Now we select it. So now the first thing we're seeing here is what? Details. Details now is a section whereby I, I you know, title the name of, name of the material I'm putting on YouTube. In this case now I'll call it, you know, there's a name already here, you know, on go to video. For example, that's what some people see as a title of the video when they go to, to watch it, right? Now, the other thing there is. Topic nine, description. So the description is going to talk about what's this video about. You this is a video, you know, to learn ICC. You might see your content. This is just like that video. You created the video yourself, so you know what to talk about on that video. So I do the content here. This for example, this is a YouTube video. Content is very important. Description is very important. Not very important. And this is where sometimes people lose subscribers to YouTube. You are making a video talking about the name of wild animals, for example. And then you are going over the description and you are misleading your audience and subscribers by giving them possible information just to attract. People do that a lot. Bloggers can be very popular. <laughs> just to get attention. For example, um, let me use sports for example. There's a champion in football played in the last week. Now, you have a summary, you can watch the full process, and that is something of the video. But this video didn't capture the entire contents of the full maybe just the bonus. I mean, remember that description, like, full live match on Chelsea at the same time. You want to flash your own, you need to have this way of showing your audience as a new content. And when they see it, they see a special description there, and they're coming here to watch the full live match without knowing just like so many experience um, highlights. You're explaining your audience. And as, a, as an instructor, you don't do this in that way, you know. You don't expect us to come to a video, uh, to a YouTube channel, seeing as a school, and my instructor that I'm looking up to, and we're going to see them this year, what like this. You understand? So, the description is very important to give accurate information of what they should know. If there is some age limit to the content you're posting, also add it to The reason I'm saying all this, all of this is, you don't have to be a local college instructor to, to use YouTube. People use YouTube on its own. So you could just learn this as a YouTube skill you want to learn. You understand? It's now another bonus to add it to classroom. So I'm mentioning all these things if you want to be a YouTube content creator. Yes, a question. You have a Gmail account. Yes, that was what I 
Oh, no, no. <laughs> On many occasions, I tried signing it through my Gmail and it refused to accept it. On my PC. Everyone is signing it. On many occasions, I tried signing it through my Gmail and it refused. So I will have to log out from my Gmail and go and watch, you know, through the whatever. Okay, I'll show you how to solve that problem. Now, Google is already a complete source, as I said, you say, including their accounts, right? Now, we are going to synchronize. Sometimes our account is synchronized with a square browser and we don't know about it. What is synchronized means is that everything about what you say is there. Yes, I have, I have that. So, what you do is that if you open a new tab, open a new tab, like I'm doing now, here, if your account is synchronized, like mine is here, you will notice this, this nine dot here is a, a gateway. Or a portal to most of those suits. You do that, right? Okay. So you just go there. When you click this, if your account is already synchronized to that browser, it will take you. And if you can see it, you're already there. You can try it out now. Okay. If you can see it, you should also like this. Okay. Right? So now, this is our description. Um, I don't know. This is very powerful. Alright, so after that, um, the next thing is now the next thing is what playlist is. Now playlist now is a section where it's like a it's like a phone. Yeah, we have playlists on our phone, right? Like we have music. So music is gospel, around the secular, rap. So that's the thing again. You can create playlists for yourself, like a category. These videos are for tutorials. These videos are for this. These videos are for this. So you have to instruct them now. You have ICT. You know, you want to create playlists for this ICT video. Another playlist for science video. Another playlist for social media. That's what a playlist is. So in this case, I have tutorial playlists and I have programming. So I have tutorial playlists and I have programming. So I'm going to upload this one that's tutorial. So I think I'm not. If your pen is focusing on a different program, so I think I'm going to throw out pen. And then, the next thing I'm going to like is audience. Now, audience is. Oh, oh. You log in to your YouTube, right? Now, on the top, on the top right hand side of your screen, you have a camera icon. If you're on your YouTube homepage, are you going to ask something? No, this is the left side. Yes, So on the top right hand side of your YouTube, you see a camera icon. You should be on YouTube.com. Yes, sir. 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 Then you should see the camera. Right there. I mean, you can all see it, right? Yeah. Oh, you can all see it. You can all see it, right? Okay. Yeah. This is it. Then click on the camera. Do you know that? So, go like that. And then show this one to everybody. So, it's when you now click on the upload video, you will now get to this interface that I have right now. So, are we, are we together? Are we still together?
as a copyright. I don't want it, I want that. This is a celebrity, you know what I'm saying? I can't buy it, by changing the name to be the product of my phone, I'll, I'll be saved. I was not saved. <laughs> I was not saved. It is, I'm not saved, I'm not saved. So please, don't think by changing the title to a video for my iPhone to say, you know, it's not a video. I don't know what you're playing. I think it's a video that I need to use this stuff, so I can use it as a video for today. When you're ready to do that. Alright, so we don't need to try it now. I'll copy the video already. So I'm going back to my words, my classroom. Remember, what led to this world? I wanted to upload the YouTube as a material. So I come back here. I'm back to my classroom right now. I copied the, the video link already, I created it, and I paste it in there. And I do what? I publish. I'm sure if you want to watch this video, you know, I've gotten 20 views. Free 20 views. Free. I'm funny, you see? Right now, I have no view. Because all of you are used to, uh, all of you are used to watch it. You all just to watch this video right now, I've gotten free 20 views. So imagine when you have an assignment that is like, hey, that's a one round of this thing. Assignment is a little. <laughs> One of the free views. We use it a lot when we're organizing conferences. Sure. There's this thing we call, um, there's this game we create on the ICT sector. When you organize a conference and then you want to, you want to get audience, and then you tell your, you tell your participants, um, whoever has the highest views on this platform, you may use some sort of an iPhone or something. You call it a cohesive or something. There's a there's a word there's a better word for it. Cohort. Cohort. Right? Cohort. Right? Who said it? It's cohort. Cohort, right? Yes. So you just bring something like that and say, okay, whoever uploads a um, comment first or whoever do, just just be great thing. You understand? Wins a prize. And you, for example, you see people rushing down there or vote. We only do it for votes. So whoever has the highest vote. And then they tell you one vote for something like ah. And then you know what you want to win the prize now. You're not telling your friends on, on WhatsApp. Watch for me. Watch for me. Watch for me. How? Sometimes our ladies, you know, those that are actually into pageantry and the beauty contest, they use that a lot. Yeah. You're organizing an event, I don't know about it. I'm not coming for the event. I'm seeing a lady. Watch for me. And the important is not for a friend. For a friend, I don't want to. I'm going to tell you what. That's one person here. But everybody is serious about it, trying to do it because they know they are something to get. And the person who does not care, because I don't know, if you have children there, and if they can get a thousand votes, then our school, our application will be asked with them. This is doing our new product and class. I'm going to give you an example of this. So, these are platforms to, when you're going into a few minutes, going to your audiences, you don't have to make money from this. Now, I just recorded um, a video link and I'm thinking about that video. As you can see, the video is there. On the website, the video. Right? Now, this is material for the one. I'm done. I want to post now, or I want to share when to post. I'm posting now. Now, if you look down here, you can see that we created a Material. Where is the material? I'm done with one. Are we following? Any questions so far? Can we now all create YouTube, upload what's created? Can we now all upload YouTube content? I want to be able to upload a YouTube video now. Right? To create the content, you don't have to go to YouTube. Just use your camera. Remember, we're talking about teaching right now. You picture the camera in front of you in your sitting room, wherever you are. You talk about the course you're talking about. You understand? You upload on YouTube. You share it. It's quite simple. If it's a class of, so, a class of one hour, this is the class content of so and so day in one day. I won't be around. For those of us that are into the institution, not for the primary school, but for the primary school teacher, okay, you can even force it to not push them what's possible. As a primary school teacher, it's going to be you're not getting time, and you know, you have to be on 30 days, for example. You won't be around for 20 days. But you don't want your students to, or the school should, to impress somebody else. You know, we have all, we need to do seats back, or students don't get them. You know, your house every day, you want to know what you're asking. And Chris, during the weekend, stay on. 
Well, how many of us can create a meeting? Look, just like in this classroom, now we have to join and we have to create. All of us are going to do that, join a new meeting or a new meeting. But when you want to become an administrator, because remember, you're a teacher in this case, you're a student in this Google classroom. So you created a classroom. So you should create a Google Meet for your physical um, video conferencing. You're not going to join the meeting, the students can for you, no. You are the administrator. So you should know how to create a meeting. I don't know if you're playing what I'm saying right now. So we do that, we just uh, go to the uh, zone.com. You see, create an account. Same way. If I don't want to go to zone.com, we're going to go to the zone.com. Go to zoom.com. Or you can write it down if you're writing. Yeah. I want to leave the classroom. Yeah, I want to leave the classroom. Yes, you can put a little tab in the background. You can minimize. Because it's still a bad thing. You can minimize the classroom. And just look at the school. We are going to still use Canva. Let's say we use YouTube and we upload their YouTube. Let's say we upload their YouTube. Don't close your Google page yet. You will see our customers. Yeah. Okay. All of this, I remember I said, I said Google Classroom is the core. And all of these tools, all of these software are something that will help you know, boost up your content in your classroom. Let's say we will learn how to use um, YouTube and we post a video on YouTube on our Google Classroom. Same way we'll see you do Canva, PowerPoint, all of those other softwares. Are we able to go? Alright, so our Zoom now, everybody, you already know how Zoom works, but what Zoom is all about. So, you create an account. Think of creating an account. Create an account, you click on the limit. You'll be talking about all the way. So, you click on create an account. How do you do this to remember what that is? I'm going to send you to my mom. Hello. So, as all of us signed into our smart house, is there any way that I can sign for Zoom? I'm not. I am.
you the result is programmed to handle more of a larger crowd. So now, in terms of costs, you want to then have free, free uh, tier plans, which you can use if you're just wanting your student to go in for one hour class and talk to you in this class. But if you don't want it, and you want to go for a state plan, um, Zoom has what we call a $14 plan, a $14.9 plan, a $19.9 plan, because you have different categories for the payment. You, know, you can pay monthly, you can pay annually. The same thing is Google Google also has a free tier plan and a paid tier plan. But the difference between their plan is this. Google Meet recognizes you per head, like you pay an account, you pay for it. It is attached to you. Right? Whereas um, Zoom recognizes it based on license. So I can create an account as an account for me. And I want to have four other admins in that account. Are we following? This is not getting started, but this area is very crucial. You can do it when it's YouTube. Right? You can say, okay, I don't want to create YouTube content. But you don't do it without video conferencing platform. The kids sometimes want to see your face. Remember, this is hybrid. It's not just online. There are times when you want to see your face, okay, you see your face. You're having a discussion. You're talking, you're hearing you. You're asking questions, you're answering it. Classroom does that, yes, you go and sign it. But I'm talking about a real time face to face interactions. So, your hybrid platform will not be complete without video conferencing platform. You can do without YouTube, without you know, video uploading, streaming platform. But you need at least a Google Meet, Cisco Webinar, um, Zoom. So we need to know how to create a Zoom account and how to configure. I think one of the craziest time I've had in my ICT career was when my Zoom one was my class. If you don't have to do this, you might be teaching your kids maybe 10 a.m. in the morning. For you know, you start saying for you that this class is for you. So you don't have to. If you don't know how to have that experience, I would advise we learn how to configure our Zoom platform. Okay? Now, if you're signing to your Zoom, like I was told we were signing to your Zoom, you would have to settings on your, on your left hand side, on your sidebar, you see your settings. Now, one more thing I want to mention to you. Alright, so what I want to let us know is that you 
we check the CP ones. Are we together? Are we together? Are we together? Are we together? So we check it. High potential sensitive information on mobile tax switcher. You should hide that. You should hide it. See, you might have to open your browser. Because some of these uh, settings, you might not get them on the app. So we have potential sensitive information on mobile tax switcher. Now, we need to do that. We're not in general. General. Other settings. Other settings. Other settings. You see general. Sure. Alright, let's do this meeting. I love our meeting. Meeting. This is how we create our meetings. I'm sure most of us are used to journalism. 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 This is how we do journalism. Security. Required for all messages. Required that all, all messages are secured with one security option. Do you notice that you have to do all of this without paying any money, right? You notice that, right? No. Because all the software is our software in our stuff that you have to create your So I want to go advance with the end of this of 2021 government. You know how to do the open right? This is just 50 percent slash or 100 percent slash. It's a free plan. And you know, uh, one of the differences I'm trying to mention between Zoom and me is that Zoom gives you one hour, straight one hour. If you're free tier plan, you have a maximum of one hour. After that, you have to be committed to me. 40 minutes, not one hour. 40 minutes. Then Google Meet gives you one hour. Okay, so it's a two-two pass here. What I'm going to say is that Google Meet gives you more time duration for free users. But Zoom is very strict. I think that's what it's supposed to be. It's not the change. You understand? So the reason that your time is, your, your time is, your duration is time. You understand? So now when you're done with that, next thing is your waiting room. You don't need that for a, for a seven years school. You understand? But if you're learning this because you want to become, you know, in HR in the company and the way to organize meetings and the instructor of a tech company, um, a CEO, you know, so any someone in charge you know, to organize meetings, you will need to know how to use waiting room. Waiting room is a central where when people are coming, when that's what are joining you, you place them somewhere. And then the host will be the one that will it there. Have you tried to join a Zoom meeting and tell you just says for you? No error, but I tell you, wait for the host to add you, right? That is what you say. Yes, wait for the host to add you. Wait for the host to let you. That's what we're doing here. You're like, you're going to the university, and then you're talking at the security point. Who are you going to see? Or maybe the United States. You wait here until the other part allows you in. So, in this case, you don't join, maybe immediately your password is correct, you are in. So, if you want your students, when you come, one day to us, for you to assess them, then you use your, your waiting room. Are we still following? Yeah. Alright, meeting passcode. We already saw that on the Google Classroom. The passcode that you use to assess persons. But unlike the um, classroom, you can configure the code yourself. I want to use some random card that I want to bring I want to use the, the meeting name. You can use it. So your plan, your meeting passcode is a passcode you select. It's a random one, but you always edit it. You want to use a phone number as a passcode? Just be security conscious. So that's under, that's under meeting password. Now, personal meeting ID. It's not the passcode. So all of these sections are under security. Require passcode for participants joining by phone. Yes, sometimes you notice you're turning your phone to ask for password. You're reading a laptop, you ask for password. You understand? Know, Embed password in the invite name for one page join. This is very crucial. We notice it on Google Classroom. When you generate that link, the link has a password. You understand what I'm saying? So somebody with a link without the password will not join. But somebody that joined using the invite name will join. Because within that link, what is the URL? Within that link is the passcode. 
So if you have a passport, it better than your invite me. So when I send it to WhatsApp, I'm reading on it. You wonder, is this true or not? It's not true. Because the invite code has been attached to the URL without that you enter. So you want that you embed your password, your invite code, you invite it for one region. Now, only authenticated users, only authenticated users can join meetings from web clients. Web clients is what? Those are your applications. You understand? To approve the uh, approve of what you show for users from specific platform. This is the reason I'm teaching this thing. This, this is the reason I'm teaching Zoom. I told myself, after my experience that day, I will always let you know that block people from certain countries. Don't let it happen to you before you get. Your Zoom shouldn't be open worldwide. It may be, it may be why? Yeah, it's my opinion. It's better. If you know you don't want people from this particular region, block them for your own good. It's not for quality, I'm only saying you should know that there's, there's an option for that. Yeah. No, I can't say that. I'm only saying there's something like it. Let me say for now, maybe. I shouldn't say that this thing might be switching on YouTube and I wouldn't know what to sound, you know. What you just face is, Marshall? Okay. I'm not sure that it has some. I don't know if you put uh, 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 She said she joined a YouTube. She said she joined a YouTube meeting from Nigeria. The YouTube meeting is being held in the And she was able to join the meeting and download all their PowerPoints. And she wasn't going to show it to the meeting. The meeting was a sensitive meeting. Your clients are not going to leave you. I'm a CEO of a company, the one with the product, and we're having an in house meeting discussing a new future. A new future that on that app. I'm the CEO, and you are my HR, and you have access to it. And as a CEO, I want not have to not start going through. I'm going, 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 you should not have this physical you understand? And then I joined the, the Zoom, we had a meeting, and one week later, I discovered our discussion over the internet, like how is this about? I discovered that somebody joined the Zoom meeting and was able to have access to our personal, your goal of interest, you should know your goal. <laughs> you should know your goal. So, security is very important, and sometimes in the development, in the educational sector, some of these things might not be so crucial. But the industry is very, no company wants to have their competitors having accessibility. So if you are being here, or you're learning this for the sake of, you know, boosting your career and everything. What do you want to see now? This is software, don't have to go together. These are different software, you know that, right? Zoom is a skill of its own, you understand? Google is a skill of its own. So you don't have to, they are only bringing them together to hide from them. So, no Zoom, you can use them and it's ready for everything. That is very important. So, now, approve of block entries for users from specific countries or regions. This is very really good. If you check many of these blocks, they will ask you only allow users from specific uh, selected countries or regions. Block users from. So, with that, you can select the countries you want to block. Are we following? Yes. Good. So after that, the next thing now is allow use of end-to-end -end encryption. We see this on Telegram. I think what's up? It's not really yes, yes, what's up? End-to-end so -end -end encryption. Whereby yeah, even the platform itself will not be able to decrypt your message. So that you're sending it to somebody, you can see it, but even what's up doesn't have access to it. So do that as well. And as you're talking about the sites on your browser, I'm going to tell you this site is not secure. The information is based on you. You should be very careful. You want to say that no one is going to that person. So, end to end encryption, you should uh, you should want it. You should turn it on for your own good. You should always want it. You should want it. The approval of running a country is your choice. I don't think it's But end to end encryption, I will always want it. I will always want it.
Now, what else? Now, we are now into the schedule meeting proper. Now, start meeting is supposed to be your own. Don't do that. I repeat, don't do that. Don't start a meeting with your video on. <laughs> I can't stress it anymore. Bad experience. For your own good, do not have uh, a toilet. You want? You don't want to get to do this. Yes, yes. You don't want to. I don't know what you want. When you when, when you catch my eyes, nothing happens. And I think you forget. Oh my God. Like the woman that the woman that I was attending to me, she didn't know. And the wife was. And when you get my voice, you might show up after like two hours, and you'll be like, oh wow. You don't know. It doesn't make you too disappointed. You can break the meeting. You can start the meeting by day. But people are coming in by two hours. But you are now accepting users you know, when you have to the meeting room by 12. And they are going to be the Maybe you are such one user. And don't. Yeah. Oh my god. I'm not going to say that I've seen crazy things happen with this, just from this interview. And the craziest of them was the lecturer who was sharing the screen with his students. I'm sure some of us are not going to that video. Please don't do that. Alright, moving on. Please turn off your video before you start. Start meeting with participants in your own. Well, if you already participate in your own, but none of your, your users will want to have their videos on without their permission. Participants can change this during the meeting, but I will advise you to leave it off. Both the host and the human participants, when you start to it all, let you yourself or your host or your user manually on it. Now, on your side, you can use your computer audio. Allow participants to join before the host. That's your choice. Sometimes I do that. You know you might be busy something, but don't have, you also have a participant waiting for you. You can just join. Because they know that the meeting is ongoing. That was a bad experience I had one time. Someone said to me, um, it, was a, it, was a, it was a job you know, on LinkedIn. So the person who went to my profile sent me a job in the like, cooking shop. And then we scheduled a, a Zoom meeting. He scheduled a Zoom meeting. And I was like, okay, what's going on? So I was like, oh, sure. And I was like, oh, sure. And I was like, oh, sure. So the meeting was scheduled on by 5 p.m. in the night on the Saturday. And then, when the control came by 4.50, the computer was also the user I knew. I was there, it wasn't the time for me to go, I knew the he sent me the link. He made it over. And I joined. I was quite happy that I was able to have a system. But the only people do not wait till 6 o'clock. Oh. That's crazy. So you could trust me here, because you turn that link to the best. You get the fake job, it's not like you. I want to start something so I enjoy it and be there for that. Most times they don't, they don't, they don't. Okay. I have my experience for that joining the program. I set up a shared group with two of you. Two different groups for the day. And I've been taking this thing to the wrong thing. To the wrong thing. Class got hard for drama. We are waiting. I was like, there is nobody here. Nobody here. Where are you waiting? He said, we are all waiting. We are in the class. Uh -uh. Wait. Nobody here. He said, we are waiting. And I had to go back to the church. Wait, right. And I was sorry. I didn't say anything. So I had to go and join. Yeah. So we all had that, right? Yeah. Now, I think from Mars' experience, we can pick up the advantage there. The advantage is that if she wasn't having the, the users join before the host, what would that be? You miss the class at 6 o'clock, and I wasn't able to join to win assistance. So what some of us are there? I think some of the reasons why some of them are still waiting was they knew that they have access to it, they could join. So what they are doing is waiting for But I think it was. Most of us, yeah, they were actually doing it from the first one. You understand? It's also has a disadvantage, too. Now we keep it there with it. So, 
you decide that say as an admin, if you want your users to join for you, I can't, I can't tell you what to do in that particular. So uh, a lot of customers will join before they host, and then continuous Zoom chats. What do you mean by this? Now this is one difference between Zoom and documents. So on Zoom, you can send chats to one person to your admin. I'm only the admin person see it. Admin person see it. You can send your customer in private information while on Zoom. But on Meet, when you send it, everybody gets to see it. You understand? So enable continuous meeting chats. Chats will continue before, during, and after the meeting. So do you want that? Uh, I don't think I would want that. Unless in this case, you I want users to join before me. When I'm not there, you guys can go ahead and have some discussions. You understand? But this is whereby the chat is only for during the meeting. Before the meeting, nobody can join. So there's a reason for that. So, you enable uh, meeting ID. That should have shown it on you. So not everybody can join you. Like, ID. So, use personal meeting ID for scheduling the meeting. Use uh, PMI. All of these are security. Now, add water map. We do that too. So, if you add water map, you want something like particular concept to be displayed. Let's assume we are having an e learning um, training for you. We want to be on the background of our meeting, on our own meeting, we want to be showing, in our Zoom, we want to be showing a logo of a customized logo of the e-learning system. That's what we want to do. We all see what I'm not doing. The PowerPoint, Photoshop, everything. Everything I'm not doing. Everything I'm not doing. What I'm not doing, those that I don't know, just make it something personal. Customize it to your list. Because of design. So we want to add the bottom half, fine. We also know that um, Zoom has what we call whiteboard, right? It's also what we call a green screen, so a lot of these are settings you find on your settings. Now, mute all participants when they join the meeting. I do not join that. How many meetings? If they really want to discuss something, maybe chat. But sometimes, unless for specific reasons, they usually prefer it to mute them. So, Upcoming meeting reminder, yes, very important. We want your, your users to be reminded. Um, requirement is a great city chat. Everyone on the right thing. This is, yeah, when I said you can send a chat directly to somebody, this way of course, send a chat directly. By default, allow participants to chat with everybody and anybody directly. Or you can have it open only to the host, to the only chat to the host. You also have it, they're not chat with anybody. We don't have a chat with everybody, so we have four options. No one, hosts, everyone, everyone and anyone that is going to find Now, new meeting chat experience, allow participants to read message in chats. Your choice. Private chats, yes. Auto saving chats, yes. Some notification when someone joins for this, no. Unless, for specific reason. I don't see any reason why you should know someone is having it. So announce number of participants for dialing participants. This is people that are joining through the Facebook um, group. Send files via the chat. Uh, I, I have a reason sometimes why I do that. I've organized so many conferences for about being a technical person in so many conferences that sometimes the people coming in to the conference are supposed to send you a presentation, a slideshow, you understand, maybe for for their rooms, you know when you're breaking into breakout rooms. They're supposed to send you a PowerPoint presentation, you know, maybe to your mail. But sometimes the meeting is going by 10. Someone is going by 12 to not say, see my own PowerPoint presentation. And you've had like a week prior to send them your, your presentation. Then you miss the whole team messed up. So when sometimes you have this something like this now, you tell them the meeting is already going on. Just send it to me by the chat. Because you wouldn't want to, especially if you are the anchor, your PC is already being projected and you don't know how to make sure you're spending on it. So you might be sending it, and it's people who went to your gym and you don't have to keep up on it, it's already sending it. So sometimes you just don't send it to the chance that you So you want people to send I think that's one of the reasons why Mao was able to download, download people's presentations. <laughs> yeah, so it's also an advantage to that. So another thing you're talking about, we're going to talk about now is they end to end experience feedback. Yes, do that. Do that. In case your meeting is hijacked, you don't have any message. Should
shows home windows and doing screen share. We all know what screen share is, right? If you're very limited, you're, you're, you're presenting something, you most likely don't want to share your screen. So you want to show your zoom windows. Yes. Now, screen share, if you want to share one participant and share the time or multiple, you can pick one. If I'm an anchor, I'm talking and I'm sharing my screen. I'm not saying you can wind through because some people don't do that. You want to share them as any time. Yeah, I just prepare for you to go on night. I want message share the time. So, who can share? Post only or all participants. There are so many settings from Zoom, which you won't even know if you're only using. Just join, join, because you're only seeing it as well as it's configured. You just face it. But as an admin, a lot goes behind the scene in configuring these things. You join anything today, you notice you can share your screen. Next week, you're joining, you're joining, then you can share your screen. It's not the same And so far, you don't know that it's your settings. No. They are doing so many things. What you like? Now, sometimes I prefer all participants, but let's have a little chat. Who can start sharing when someone else is sharing? Post on it. Okay, that's why I'm very funny. You're having a, a ten, you're giving a time, 10 minutes to share your to talk about something. And you're just like into it, and somebody is already. People are very funny. Someone is already using their own screen to share their own screen. Sometimes I prefer, let's only the host have the permission to share a screen while someone is watching. But at the end of the day, if your, if your Zoom meeting doesn't go well, you'll be held responsible. Nobody cares if someone is tampering with it. You, as the admin, will be seen as someone who is not capable of especially in the IT system. It's not capable of it. Now, disable desktop screen sharing. Disable remote control. I do that. Whiteboard, I mentioned that. You want to use whiteboard contents, you want people to be able to share. You know, there's a different form of sharing. So what can be right on Zoom, you know, writing, practicing. So as a teacher in this case, you might want to use the whiteboard future game. So remote control, slide control, you might know, just leave it great. Um, allow remote participants to rejoin. That's in fact a very important point. Someone is having a meeting, sometimes that's what happens to them when they are being bounced out. I don't know how many people are experiencing. You're in the meeting, and then nobody hit you up, but your network was called, you bounced up, you were bounced up, and then you notice that you couldn't rejoin. Sometimes it's not, it's not fair. You, know, you might want your remote participants to, to rejoin. Now, show you by seeing this on the participants of the years. A lot of participants to rename themselves. Yes. I do that. I don't want to rename themselves. But sometimes it shows by default the person using something. When you're not on 12, you notice. The person is never put that into it. person doesn't want to show his name into it. It's a personal device. He doesn't want everyone to know. He wants to change it to his name. So another, another thing we want to use sometimes is that we have to use different dignitaries on the platform. But sometimes before they join, they need to know when you're ready to see There's an option for you to display them if you want people to see them. But some of them don't want to see them. But when they now log in, they resume it. They notice that something they want to now put their tights on everything. So, most likely you want them to remain there. So. Now allow participants to allow users to change their name while joining this. Yes. Allow host or co-host to remain participants. Yes. Like participants provide each other. Right? What do you want? Now these are the advanced features of um, settings. Now report to Zoom, yes. Breakout rooms. How many of us have been in Zoom meeting? Yeah, they, they tell you, okay. It's now time for a very large room. You notice that you find yourself in a yes. different room. Yes. That's what is very cool. It's very cool. Especially, like, one of the experiences I had was doing a uh, super conference. Super special conference. I was uh, privileged to be in the technical, in all of the technical experiences. Uh, and I was in charge of a very large room. And then I was anchoring in our water capacity there. Everybody was there. Literally, everybody was there. So we were anchoring, and then it was time for a very large room. And at least a program. You now have to go and start configuring your program. But if you said it before now, before now, the um, the MC has already has something to tell you. Okay, if you know your science science department, your science sector, there's a breakout room for you. Find your vision here. Yeah? You know if you're not social science, there's a breakout room for you. Right? So you already have it in your configured. So you don't have to now at that point in time start creating a program. So you have it, you want to have a breakout room, yes. You create it, you already know. 
science personnel to go to Hall A to look at the there. Um, science, uh, it's social science here. Yeah. So try, if you know, unless you know you don't need it, if you know there might be need, you don't create it and you don't, you don't use it. You understand? Then you need create it and then it's what you need. Right. So break out from yes, we want support. Sorry, sir. Yes. Yeah, just an additional part of the question. Not for any of us to know who you are actually participating on it. I was on a seminar and there was a new house. And as soon as they are had select their rooms. So they gave us rooms to tight where you want to go to where you're going to. So we found out that uh, in this part of the drive where we log on to, we just be there. The person is not there, but it's all like this. And then, just to have a present here, but it's not there. So when it was now selected a great part of some people vanished. They were calling them no beer. <laughs> they were not going to any room. So the whole thing was like, where are these all these people that are here? Where are they? So, we got the great people in the you will not find them. Um, my, I love this investing money. Because people are working, working, working. Yes, people are working on this uh, mindset, there's only students that do this. I'm happy I'm here for the person I am. Even nature has seen that. Because my room and bed, where we are supposed to be, they're having a class. They're spending a lot of time in the room and living. And they're just saying, and we're thinking, ah, bad students. But now, they're getting what they're doing. They're getting what they're doing. <laughs> so what does that mean? This means that if I use this opportunity, this platform that only checkmates, those are only uh um, actually passing on the on the platform. Unless someone can come and say, okay, I'll come in the top. Alright, so manual captions, you can do that, automatic captions, put transcript, yes, allow the viewing of full transcript in the end now, save your caption. Sign out with some of these things, this one can just be there. Better background, yes, allow the flash. Sometimes you're in the place where you don't want to see your background. It happens. You know. If we have a meeting, we saw we have a lot of our You don't want food to see your background. But you want the video. When you know, there's a video meeting, you're, you're not showing your, your video, right? And you're showing your video, but you don't want to see your background. It's quite green screen. So if you want to do your background background, you know, be the one people are sitting. That was the video. So I allow the news of. Now, use a HTML command email. Now, join, show a join from your browser link. This is very important. See this? Show a join from your browser link. Now, this is very important because when they try to join a, a, a group, a Zoom, and you see that spot pop up. I like it. But I don't know if it's so soon because I'm not joining your meeting. It's not cool. Now, we are very to grab my network. Sometimes it's difficult, data is different. And sometimes, as far as going on, this Zoom is like, it's like WhatsApp. They keep increasing the size of the software. I don't even notice it. When WhatsApp started initially, 15 MB, you know there was a. You know, you don't have 100 MB, you don't have 100 MB. It's quite crazy. And we can understand why it's the enemy. Sometimes it's not good on you. The background was cheap. Oh, it's so can you see me? Hello? It's free. Uh, yes, it's inside. So, what are you doing? No, no, no. I'm not here. I'm not here. I'm not in a private place. You're using your internet. Not in this sense. The internet is provided. Right. Like, you're in your house, for example. And you have, like, maybe 100 MB left. You have like 100 MB less. And someone said, for me to join my meeting, I have to download the Zoom. And your list is it's something that you can download the Zoom. The Zoom app, you understand? So sometimes a lot of people join from your browser. So I'm not, this, this is everything you need to understand about Zoom. I'm not really, we all use Zoom. I want you to explain Zoom by the platform. What I just need you to do is the settings of how to create a, a Zoom meeting. So after this, enable stop incoming video. And when you're done with this, you this is the 
guest speaking. We are having a meeting. And your record is the next thing. We are always going to be on meeting. We said that from general to meeting. Now we are recording. Now this is recording. You want your Zoom to be recorded. You want your Zoom to be recorded and saved in your local host. Like that. Because you use data. But you can do that. If you know you want to use that video later on. You want it. To, well, there are two sets, set, set, uh, settings. You have it lo uh, downloaded on your local host or you have it uploaded to the Zoom cloud. So on local host, you have it on your, on your local host. The size might be much, but it saves you all those extra features of having to download it. So that's what recording means. Now, automatic recording. Recording means automatically as it starts. Especially another one, you want, when you want to start recording. This one is not recording automatically. So, record, play voice prompt for all participants. Record notifications, yes. By this record notification, it lets people know that they are being recorded. So that, is, that is recording. Now, the next thing we are talking about is audio conferencing. You just want audio. Now, Zoom app is the other one. Um, nothing more than one, they just launch the app. Whiteboard is the setting, the setting whereby you configure your whiteboard. Ex allow export of whiteboard content when you're done. Those for those are participants. Allow participants to share their whiteboard content. Out of meeting whiteboard. Okay. Allow only invited users to share their whiteboard. Just all you need to understand on that whiteboard. Now we have notes, we have clips. And once you're done with all of these settings, you can now go and what? Host a meeting. Have you seen host a meeting there? On your top right hand side of your screen, you see host a meeting. Make sure you have your settings configured before you host a meeting. Because host a meeting is using that configuration you already, you already, you already configured. So, you see, host a meeting. It's not prompting you. Any question about Zoom? I see launch meeting. Any question about Zoom? Any question on the headset? You know you can use Zoom on your phone as well. Honestly, I'm just going to summarize all the software. Yes. Yes. Like Zoom, you can zoom apart from the setting, there is something that all this research on the profile. There are so many other configurations on that zone. When you make no one you can understand this setting for the security and security. So, I want to talk about that and I'm going to go into the cloud drive. Right? Because Google Meet is similar to Zoom. So, I'll just touch a little bit about that. And then the last one is supposed to be, I've been inspired at the time it's really hard. Sorry, just follow me. There is a need for sometimes it's hard to see you, to ask you questions. So we are not going to do Yes, it's, it's, it's an issue that's why you don't have to bring any. You don't have to embed it. The only thing I'm making you embed is if you bring it, you generate your invite name. Right? Are you having a human? If you generate your invite name, after creating a just I think I want to invite them on the so when you now come over to your classroom, you understand? Now, under your, under your, under your um, announcement, you will now be there. There will be a, a Zoom meeting. Then you now embed your link. But we're not bringing it like the material, you know. We're not bringing it like an assignment. It's a video conferencing platform. So you want a Zoom meeting and you want to come share on your Facebook or your WhatsApp or maybe you share. But you want it to come on the platform, the platform must be sit. Just with the announcement. So I've been doing this for some some time. He said, "What information we based on WhatsApp? You know, the password and everything. We just drop it in the announcement with the name. So that's the only way you are going to do it. So that's enough for that. Now, camera. Man, camera is good. Oh, we already there. Okay. So we are already done with it. Thank <laughs> you.
You know, I think you have got codes on page or whatever for the title. But you can do some drag and drop in the future that gives you a website interface. So you can choose the body to come back proper. I'm not here for that. Just to see the simple thing. But Canva has like this. this now, this is my account. So I can show you some of the people I've built over time. Because Bros. these are some of the people I've built over time. So, logos, you know, some uh, products for presents, some conferences, stuff, so, um, this, is a, this is a design for, you know, the, the honey platform, you know, so, uh, the honey for a honey bottle, you know, to showcase This is a um, Merry Christmas uh, kind of stuff. So many things come out of this. So, yeah, that's it. No, this is not a camera. I'm sorry. Don't get into the design something on camera. Alright. So, I want to design something on biology, right? For his plan. Alright. So, I just go there. On camera, type biology. Right now, I'm going to get a template. I can work with it. But I don't want to use that, right? So, biology presentation. You just like one. You have different uh, templates coming up. You want to place it in two minutes, three minutes. So, you want to use that template. So, let's go for this also. Because that kind of thing. You don't have to do biology. You can do ICT. You can do anything. Then, when you just type it, I don't give the little one. You have a question. You just say, oh, oh. And then I'm going to design. Or I say here, there are so many templates right now on biology. Yes. Right? Why do you want a group project? You want to customize it to your, to your taste. You have some pictures, you want to bring it together. Yes. Are we still together? Yes. Yes, I'm most of All right. So, yeah. now, okay, just like you have that from, uh, Canva has free tier plan, just like you see on Zoom and Google and everything. You also have free tier plan. The free tier plan is for pro. I want to pay for it. You have some other people. If you guys don't have it, you can sign it. But for this, people that are doing your street tech plan, now I want to select this out from this. This is a PowerPoint presentation that has first slide already. You can see it there. That's it already slide, right? We have first slides. What do I do? I think this one is pro. I want to see it on that. Right? What do I do? You can see that's what I do. Customize this tech plan. Right? Are we still going? Yes. Yeah. Now, customize this case here. Because I'm customized. This is now I'm right for the And this is right for the new So, this is their case. Maybe it is for a university, a university in Canada. What case is to the whole world coming? Nobody is against it. Okay. Unlike you to that very good one, you know. I'm going to ask you and I'm going to get this here, which means you're, you're making it spoken for everybody. So, the difference now is if it's a pro or if it's free. This is pro and you are free, so have a map. So your design has a map, that it is. What yeah. if you edit it here? Are you still taking it from. Of course! Why not? Oh, yes, you can download it. You create you edit it, you download it, you upload it. Yes, yeah. of course. It's not, you cannot use it then, I won't say it. I'm not going to download it, you can share your link. Collaborate, just like I did on YouTube, I upload and I share the YouTube link. I can press here and I'll copy the Canva link and I'll send it to the classroom. And someone will click on this and to bring them in. Hello? No, I'm going into the proper ICO. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Alright, so this is a slide. Right? Remember I said, I typed biology presentation. The word presentation means it's a PowerPoint. You want to read a logo or a picture, you don't have to do presentation at the end. I was like, biology images. You got to tell me. Want a video, biology videos. Also, you can import. Are you following? You can also import. You already have something you already, you already have, maybe a video already, you already customize, maybe you're using your phone in PowerPoint or something, or in uh, Photoshop. You already customize, when you want to bring it here, you can do that. You can bring it here and then delete it. So this is as much flexible as classroom is. So this is, you can go to classroom without camera, obviously. I'm going to give you a classroom that can use to pop up. 
add flesh to your classroom. That's the good of it. So now, with this now, you can see, the level of is still loading. Now. But you can see, this is a material science project. I cannot choose to edit it. So whatever you want. Now, if this is PowerPoint now, you can still see them things, but you can see them things flashing on PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Those of us that are using PowerPoint, you yeah. won't see this flash. It's just one of those that they are less to say. And this one gives you more flexibility. God, you want to go in the house. And it's not just presentation. You can do it for normal um, design. You just say design, you just pass across the information. And that, uh, uh, this stuff is, we saw here on Classroom, this stuff, this design stuff, this ICT stuff here. You can read the camera. How can I just do it? Anything is there, how can I just do it? Obviously. Yeah. Don't download or copy the video. It's still not the image of the video. You don't know, if your network is strong, you don't know. I'll vote it in the world. It's a network issue. If your network is strong, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You get it? So now in this case now you can see, apply all check pages. So this is a check page slide. This is a check page slide. Um, science project by Olivia. Because of Olivia, I want to change the name. Try it on YouTube, you'll plan it. Here I can do it. I don't want to use Olivia. The moment I change the name, it's, my, it's not my design. So don't be scared about, ah. The only thing you should be worried about is if you really want to be creative, then make it very nice, people will not recognize it. I can just go here, just change the name, and use the rest. I'll change the color of my brand. I'll just change the color of my brand. Yeah. Yeah. So, online, other platforms, Canva, DC, the machines, anything there is open source. Are we following? Yeah. Alright, so in this case now, anybody, I'm believing how much you're creating something on Canva. It must not be uh, biology, it could be chemistry, it could be anything, it could be yourself. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So just try and just because you that you won't discover you're having issues once you try. You could just copy notes and you take your person. When you get to the field and you're not trying to practice it. You better you try it now, have an issue and we resolve it than not trying. Are we following? Yes. Alright. So we have a uh, presentation here, we can do a logo, we can create a video, anything an icon. So just picture a course you are about to teach and how you want to customize it. With this, I can take the cover to us here. Okay, but I won't end it here. But I want to talk about download. What is kind of feature? So you want to download, you want to share. For us to be able to use this on, on the platform, right? You see share. On the top right hand side of the screen, you see share. Now, when sharing, you can share either using a collaborative link. This is not general, probably the link. Right? Or I want to download. Are we all there? Yeah. Okay. So, when collaboration is being made, now we want to only, only you can access, just like Google Drive. Right? Only you can access, everyone with the link can access. So, if I select only everyone with the link can access, which means everybody will have access to it. If you're sharing with your link, make sure everybody can access it. You know the share is here by only you can access. They won't say it. So, anyone with the link can access. Then you cannot decide are they accessing to edit it or are they accessing to view it. In this case, we are going to have it as can view. Because we don't want our students to start modifying our presentation. This is a material. Are we going to share? Now, I'll configure my own now. See share now on the top right hand side of the screen. You need to open a design for you to share. You're not sharing the Canva account, you're sharing a particular design you're working on. So until you open a design, you're not sharing. You need to open a design and then are we there? And then click on share. Now, collaborative link, if you want people to access it through a link, you also select do you want them to view it? Do you want them to edit it? Do you want them to comment on it? Just view on it. And with that, I'll copy the link. Right? I'll copy the link. Now I'll go over to classroom. And I'll go back to my classwork. I'll go back to material. And then on that link, I'll paste that kind of value. Are you seeing it? 
having the camera will generally will look for that uh, design and then we'll pick up on it. Now what I'm going to do here is I'll we'll just title it camera material for them. So under description. Right? Under which topic am I uploading is under with under with so now we just like click on post and I'll post it with a couple of sit here. So this is it. So now it's left, it's left for you now to now choose how to design the camera. You're not going to go much depth into it. I'm not going to go the camera course itself. You know how to teach you, you know, design color combinations, everything, UI UX, I have them here. You understand what I mean? So, but because of time constraint, I'm not going to go into a proper camera course. It's a course. But if you want, if you really want to know how to be creative about it, how to be good about it, um, about the platform, you can just check it on YouTube. I think there should, there should be so many um, videos on it. Yeah, or I prefer you to like, try to get Or you can meet me after, meet me after. I have a course on camera. I have a course on camera. Which I bought on you So I can just share it with you if you have a flash drive and go send it to you. So it's supposed to be a VNAM course, so you don't have to have one on your camera at all. Camera, 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 camera. Other than that, Canva is should know all the combinations. You know, I don't, I don't change this this bacteria image now. Some other image. So we just going here. Yes. The same thing is about Canva. If I go into Canva Pro Pass, it costs to take more time than flash of day. So if you really want to be more creative about the Canva, a week later, I'll just send some uh, Canva courses. So are we okay? So we're just going to have Canva is there for you, for you to work with. For you to work with. But I'm having a problem with the link. I can't copy the link. Oh, okay. Have you, have, you, have you seen your share? Yes. Have you picked up the share? Yes. Have you seen something I've seen there? People with assets, collaborating, can you see that? Is it dropping down? When you pick up the link, is it dropping down? So what are you seeing, sir?
you can't see all the frequent about get a little bit. Because if you don't if you don't cancel it, then you will charge you. But you can you can ask me and I continue your frequent. So now this is another tip I'm going to give you guys is so don't do it if you feel like you don't want to do it, but I do it so. Whenever that stuff comes up, that's what you're talking about now, and you're asking about the second What I do is I enter my credit card details. The moment they give me the, the pro version, I cancel it again. It will still run for 30 days. It's a cheat code. It's a cheat code. So how do you do it? Yes, they won't disconnect you. It will still run for 30 days. It's just like Spotify. Just enter your account details. I'm going to cancel it. I love using my PayPal for it. I don't know if my PayPal will disconnect you. It's still wrong. If you go off there two days and come back. But there's some parts of the brain. You might cancel it.
see on Twitter, you see on TikTok, you see on Instagram, you see on Facebook page, you see on Facebook story, you see on LinkedIn, you see on LinkedIn profile, you see on Facebook and everything. So these are all opportunities that you have. I'm going to say it again, all the software that is selected for the purpose of this can all be used on your phone as well. The situation where you're working on the design before, you know, the, the, the power went off or the laptop went off, and you want to use the design tomorrow. Not that I just talk about the phone, I'm just like, you know, the dog power, working on the dog power on the PC, there's no power supply, no need to finish it off. The interface will not be as flexible or as, you know, yeah, user experience, but at the same time, you can still put it back up, just back up. I don't encourage you to use it for a full design, but you want to finish something that you already might want. You won't you won't get the PowerPoint. You won't get the Photoshop. That's a very easy thing. But with Canva, find out, copy to your browser. All the software that you don't want on the browser. Are we going to do? So, if you say I can complete it like that, we all know PowerPoint, right? And if you look at our error, you might not know PowerPoint. But the goal of bringing PowerPoint is for something like this too, for design. But if you already know PowerPoint, I believe we should follow the PowerPoint. So, with this, we've talked about Classroom, how many people should do that? We've talked about YouTube, how many people should do that? We've talked about Zoom, we've talked about Google Meet. Talk about Canva. The only one we are anyway really skipping is PowerPoint. And I have energy to see, but I don't think we do guys have energy. There are no guys. There are no guys. I'm sorry, sorry. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Forgive me. I'm so sorry. So that I can get away. I'm so sorry. My son, my man, I'm so sorry. He's finally, 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 finally. I'm sorry. 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 i am now, if you are on a, if you are doing a pro, you also see that. Thirty days free. So, any questions so far? With this idea, we could do because according to the program, I was told after the training, there will be a session. I believe we need to train the guys to share data. We did both the training section, the health section, and hands on section and center. So I believe we've done. We don't just see it. So, my son and my man, if you have any question, please. Why am I that? I am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If that's where you can get it right, yes, I'll be told by the technical crew that the, this, this event will be posted on, on YouTube. So we can also uh, get it from there. And at the same time, if you need a... I can recommend you place a place where you can get the full training. You know, like I asked you, or you just want a, a review. You can get a review, but you can get it from YouTube. But if you want me to create a detailed course on this... I don't know. Okay, yes, I think I... Yes, we can do that. I dropped it, I dropped it. Sure, I put I put that for I put all I put send it to me. I'm not going to put it I don't know how to send it. So but I think it's possible. It's possible. How about I just put it just back it out as a dog file and then just So why do we go with the actual? How do we get it? So why do we go with the actual? What I this is my notes. Yes, I can put that in the people. I see how it sets up across the issue like that. But that's for the very easy. So now it's like. Yes, yes, yes. Very, very easy. 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 Very
But that was why I, 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 I advised why the training was going on. Come on, be jotted. Ask the Lord as as the devil does. You understand? I will, I will get that. I will tell you that. That will be the end. Thank you very much, sir. It's been a pleasure to see you in the beginning of